The project in North Glasgow is really about utilising um, vacant sites, derelict land and a canal, an asset that we had in the middle of North Glasgow that could be utilised much more to take advantage of rainwater that was falling or is going to fall on some of the sites around North Glasgow. So in the normal spheres that I work in, natural capital is a term that everybody understands. But if I'm talking to somebody on the towpath, I would use different terms to describe it. So natural capital is very much the value of nature to society. It gives us our food, our drink, our air, our building materials, everything we need to survive. And to be sustainable, we need our natural capital. And this example here on the canal side shows in spades how valuable canals can be to a sustainable society. This project is really about reimagining and reusing some of the land beside the canal and also using the canal as a, a kind of active way of, of managing infrastructure and water flow um, throughout North Glasgow. So at the moment this is derelict land and it cannot be developed because the rainwater system at the moment has to go into the Victorian sewage system and that's at capacity. They could have used a grey infrastructure solution, but that would cost them £50 million and involve digging a tunnel under Queen Street Station. The natural capital solution is going to cost about £8 million and it's going to provide an awful lot more benefits. The Smart Canal project that we have developed with those partners is a, is a way of um, anticipating when there's a, a future seri serious rain event coming, uh, we can actually drop the level of the water of the canal. We've set up sensors all around the country that allow us to monitor how the canal can be managed by, by Scottish canals, and then it can take a lot more water um, when North Glasgow experiences those flood events. The Smart Canal is going to deliver carbon savings for Scotland significant carbon savings rather than putting water into built infrastructure which requires concrete and all kinds of capital investment we've got a system which runs on nature runs on gravity and lets us use that to reduce our carbon impact of us managing wastewater and rainwater in the wrong place in Scotland. Imagine yourself here 200 years ago this was a hotbed of the industrial revolution there was a tavern behind us with people serving beers at the end of a hard day's work. There was an iron foundry, there was flour mills, there was chemical works, all kinds of things going on and this would be in a hugely polluted area with poor air, poor water quality, very little nature. And I think the industrial history that was here that's left such a devastating legacy for Glasgow is now a history that's like going to actually enhance people's health. Losing that industry was so detrimental to everyone's health in Glasgow and now we've got it all back and we know how hard it is to be in cities and be part of nature. So you've taken a bit of nature that was in Glasgow that was forgotten and turned it into something that's like just... It. And by actually linking it, you've yeah. linked it to people's lives. It's, it's wonderful. Previously, the canal was a barrier, now it's a, it's a yeah. link, it's, yeah. joining, it's joining people up. Yeah, it's... yeah I'm going to start crying now, it's so beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Claypits Local Nature Reserve is now a designated status, it has its own status as that, but it's the only inner city nature reserve in, in Glasgow and it's what the community wanted to do. We asked these communities a number of years ago what should we do with this area and we held design workshops and they said they wanted to, to make the most of the green space to open the area up for better walking and cycling. Yeah, communities and the local people around the canal and the clay pit site have always used it as best they could. Um, you know, like people would come and fly their doos here, um, people would come and fish here. If you were particularly brave, you would venture into the middle and you would build dens and you would maybe try the canal. But the difference is now it's much more open, more accessible, and it's always amazing to me that people that live near it still are just finding out about it. And that's, that's the exciting bit. It's now this place that has always been part of your community, and now it's somewhere that other people might want to come and visit. We've done a study recently with Glasgow Caledonian University and the Data Lab, which has highlighted the benefits or, to health 
um, in communities beside the canal in the last 20 years of, of those periods of investment. So um, the mortality rates have reduced in the areas immediately adjacent to the canal faster than they have in the areas further away from the canal. So we think we're on to something, something really good that we can then use to influence future policy and decision making and also investment making decisions. This has been developed by a housing association, so it's all going to be affordable housing. Some of it's going to be um, private sales to keep the housing association going, but a lot of it's going to be affordable rents. And that means the people here will be able to use uh, active travel or walking or cycling, whatever, to get into town to get to their jobs. They won't have to commute and spend a lot of money just getting into the town. So I think you cannot separate natural capital, the economy and the community. It's one big ecosystem. It's very, very easy to take for granted everything that nature does for us. And along the same lines to think that nature is separate from our economy, it's separate from the flows of money in our world. And it's not, it underpins absolutely everything we do. And talking about it in money terms brings this into the minds of the people who make policy, but also those of us who get all these wonderful benefits from nature. We need to have more places like this for communities right across Glasgow and Scotland. The, the, you can't um, put a value or a price on just being able to leave your house and if you're looking to escape, relax, observe, feel in touch with nature, pick the blackberries, look out for the deer, watch out for the fox, it's a fantastic resource and that's why the focus has got to be on the natural habitat, to keep it a place for the wildlife and that's we've got to get that balance because that's that's what brings people to it that's what makes it different and special